Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle book review of Four Fisted Tales, Animals in Combat. And now this is by Ben Tao, and the book is from Dead Reckoning, who sent me a copy of this. So, uh, but however, that does not influence me when I could turn around and say, it's great, it's rubbish, whatever. So this is Four Fisted Tales, Animals in Combat. Now the book has 106 pages, lovely all the way through with tritone colours there, so there's no sort of multicolour, sort of glossy, just really nice paper quality. You can see the paper quality there. It's not glossy at all, but still really well drawn all the way through. The panels work great, very easy to follow the story, which I always think is a key thing. I love it. The paper is just absolutely, I love that cover. Got a few books like that, but just great. They had no choice. So obviously it's all about various animals in over the years. Conflict. Starts 1918, obviously in France at midnight as it says and the story follows these characters and this and that actually finishes off at the end so the story goes a bit further on so you got here the contents you got Jack ship cats you got dolphins mascots Satan well who's a dog <laughs> seagulls and many many others and here's Jack this is during the Civil War period again absolutely beautifully drawn this is 1863 see lovely there and it's also quite nice because it actually turns around and tells what happened afterwards after the story obviously ends and it just gives you a bit of an epilogue there as well nice touch ships cats absolutely there's wonderful ships cats of the royal navy and that's just absolutely and i love that bit with catching a rat there absolutely brilliant cats are definitely very good at that and you've got their various cats there and obviously got one called beauty fred wooden pound Tiddles, I knew a cat called Tiddles, loved Tiddles, great cat, was as shy as anything, would always run off as soon as I, but always I loved him. And you've got here Abel Sea Cat Simon, absolutely great as well. Dolphins, now this one's a slightly more unusual story. The next story is set in 1989, it's in the courthouse and talking about whether dolphins are used or not used in conflict. And that's quite an interesting story, I'm not going to say what the conclusion is at the end. Next one is about mascots. So you've got a variety of different mascots and different periods. So you've got very early in the sort of like Roman period, that sort of time, I would guess. And also famous mascots of the more modern era. Obviously not that modern particularly, but so uh, you've got ones of, such as elephants there and also tigers. I, the tiger's pretty good there. Impress. I'm not certain I would want to be standing next door to a tiger there. But however, I love the drawing. The drawing is absolutely great. What a Great looking tiger there. Next one, Satan. Satan is dog and it's set in 1918. And that's a really, really good story. Very well told. Great sort of as the dog runs across no man's land, etc. That's obviously I'm not going to say what happens in any of these stories. That's terrible to say. Seagulls or seagulls obviously used, but it's just great because it's using sort of observations that are made during war that certain things happen. And you think, oh, that could be useful. So it's an interesting little story about food. And that's a really nicely told story. And again, very informative. I must admit, I hadn't really given any thought about potential uses, what seagulls do in terms of looking for food and where you can get some idea for uh, mind detecting rats. Well, there are some, see some uses for rats and there's a, a rat there. I guess, of course, they are quite light. They are quite annoying as well, and sometimes, uh, yes. But there's a, this one is obviously uh, very, very up to date. Obviously all the mine there, you can see the mine there. Oh, awful, absolutely awful. But of course, you've got a situation where like with dogs and things, or obviously humans going across, it's obviously they weigh a bit more than a rat. So it's uh, quite, like I say, very poor eyesight. Never realized that they had poor eyesight. Probably bad for my eyesight sometimes. Too light to set off a mine two or three inches, including the tail. Wow. Don't confuse the book with this. Two-Fisted Tales, huge, huge volume. I love this one. EC Comics, Two-Fisted Tales. It is slightly lighter as well. The next one is Wachek, which I don't know if that's just the name of the bear or name of a bear in the particular country. I have no idea. However, it's a real nice story. And it also has a nice twist in the end, which fits more nicely with the title of this book, which is Four Fisted Tales, which I assume is obviously a, a slight, what's name, on Two Fisted Tales, which is, of course, the famous EC comics, uh, Blazing Combat and uh, Frontline 
combat, etc. And many, many others, of course, war comics, so Four Fisted Tales. But the war, this one has got a nice little twist. Again, very well told. And it's only about five or six pages, very short story. And then on to slugs. I must admit, I always feel very sorry for slugs. Um, they're not actually involved in particularly the conflict, so uh, I don't think they would be the most useful sort of thing. You could send them out, sort of. No. However, they always seem to get squashed, unfortunately. But they do have an amazing ability, which is very useful, obviously, in certain conflicts. And this, obviously, back in the First World War. So that's uh, an absolutely beautifully drawn there again. The artwork, I say, is throughout this is absolutely superb. The panels use just really great. Well told story, very easy to read as well, very informative. I came away from this book really learning quite a bit about various things that I just did not know. I mean, obviously, I read a number of books about various wars, but the sort of things about slugs, not probably something you normally read about in a conventional book about First World War. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I don't know. I can't recall ever reading. However, more obvious one horses. And this one, of course, again, covers different periods this is of civil war obviously roman period etc so you've got war horses there again very short story and not particularly a story just obviously famous horses obviously napoleon bonaparte etc and also alexander the great then on to another one that's probably again more obvious as well carrier pigeons so you've got carrier pigeons and some lovely massive panels there absolutely superb and the, fin the story finishes. That's it. But it goes on to obviously what how it starts and then finishes. And I'm not going to say what happens. About the crater, there's a lovely uh, little biography at the back about him. By the way, there is also an ebook version of this. So if you don't want the physical copy, you can go to the deadreckoning.org website and download a digital copy of that. And the price of the book is $24.95. Now I have no idea what the price of the ebook version is nor what the price is currently on any of the websites that are selling this book. Obviously, the usual suspects. I really, really love Dead Reckoning's books, so uh, please check out their website. Well, what a great book. Four Fisted Tales, very informative, entertaining, interesting. I also came away with a number of things that I didn't realise about animals in combat. The author, and I will check out some of his other books as well, Oyster Wars, Amelia Earhart, Midnight Sun, and Farewell Georgia. So this one... Like many other books I've been reading recently, definitely totally recommended.